Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim and Tammy, and we are working through our Pulse Programming Activity Guide. We have done activities one through five, the getting started activities. Activity six was building, so they actually built CodyBot, and now we're ready for activity number seven, driving forward. I'm gonna run the computer, Tammy's gonna tell me what to do, and we're ready to get started. All right, so in this activity, you're working on programming the robot to drive forward. Now, whenever you do get to the part of actually putting the program onto the Pulse controller, once you load it on there, you can unhook the wire, and then we'll come back and look at the robot and see it drive forward. So first thing we need to do is open the program. So you can go to the examples link and go down to activity seven. Now in this program, there are a couple new blocks that we're using. The first block that you see is the pulse invert motor block. What this allows you to do is allows for both the motors that you have present on the Cody bot to go in the same direction. So this makes sure that you don't have one motor turning one direction, the other motor turning the opposite direction. And then the next thing that we have is now we have two motors. You can have the set motor powers block and then you can add different powers for each motor. So you have two different motors and the power set on them is at 50. And then they will drive forward at a power of 50 for three seconds. So what should we expect to see? I mean, basically we've talked, you said that we had two motors and they, they were, we had to invert one and that's because they're pointed in opposite directions, right? We want right. them to work together and rotate and, uh, in the same cooperatively, one will have to go clockwise, one will have to go counterclockwise to do a forward and backwards. So we've got that set up. So what should we actually see the robot do? So once you have the program loaded on the robot, those DC motors are going to turn and we're gonna see that robot drive forward for just three seconds and then at the uh, end of the program is the pulse end block. So after those three seconds, it will just stop. Awesome. So because before we were doing a looping behavior, so right. now we're just going to do it one time. Cool. So let's go ahead. We're going to go down to our floor and actually execute our program. Uh, well, first we got to upload it, right? right. We've been, we opened it, but we didn't upload it. So I'm going to let you plug uh, the robot in, turn it on. I'll hit the download. We almost forgot the most important part. And I'm not doing my job, Tammy. So anyway, we're going to see... Should have data coming across. There it goes. Uh, and I've got a message that says it was successfully uploaded. Right. And so once you see that it's not loading that program anymore, it's already on there, then you can just unplug. Now we're from ready the to computer. go down Now we're ready. Awesome. Let's do that. Okay, we, we took our robot and we executed it. Did it do what we expected it to do? Yes, and one thing to keep in mind with your robot is it will function differently on different surfaces. So if you're testing this on carpet or a surface with a little bit more friction than a smooth surface, it may act just a little bit differently. And it also depends on the power that you have in your battery. So if you have a fully charged battery, it's gonna act just a little different than if your battery's been drained a bit. Awesome. So what's the extension of this? What would we do next? So what you can try to do with this, we just had it drive forward. You could have it drive forward and backward or have it drive to a specific distance and stop and figure out the time amount that you need for it to travel. Cool math application, right? Because yes. we know we can, we know the size of the, the, the the diameter of the wheel, we can figure out circumference. We could actually calculate how far it would go, right? Based right. on time? Yeah. Awesome. And the real world link for this is think of trains. Trains can actually only go forwards and backwards. So that's why on train tracks, you don't see a 90 degree turn. A train has to go around a curve if it needs to change direction. Awesome. So that was activity number seven, moving forward. So we're ready to go ahead and move on to activity eight. So come back and see us.